I'm Teresa Heapy and welcome to Puffin Storytime. Today I'm going to read to you a picture book that I've written called The Marvellous Moon Map and it's got illustrations by the wonderful David Litchfield and it's about a mouse and a bear who go on a big adventure to find the moon and they think, particularly mouse, that they need really special things to help them find it. But it turns out that all they really need to get to where they need to go is each other. They just need their special friendship and that'll get them through. So let's read the story, shall we? Open up the book. The Marvellous Moon Map. Mouse and Bear lived in a little dark house in the big black woods and today Mouse wanted to find the moon. That's what he wants to do. Let's see what he says. He says, I'm off to the moon, Bear, said Mouse, on my own and I'm making a moon map to show me the way. Mouse, said Bear, why don't you sit down? I'll help you pack up and then we'll set off together. No, Bear, said Mouse firmly. I don't need your help. I'm the moon map inventor. I'll go on my own. So, Mouse worked on his moon map. Oh, look, there he is. He planned and he thought. He watched and he wrote. He read and he tweaked and he measured and drew. Oh, he worked so hard. Oh. And look at this lovely picture that David's done of Mouse working so hard on his map with his crayons and his books and his stickers and all the things that he needs. Oh, it was a magnificent, mighty, most marvellous moon map. Well done, Mouse. Right then, said Bear, we'll need torches and jumpers and gloves to keep warm and a hot flask of tea. All I need is my moon map, said Mouse. Are you sure? murmured Bear. Oh yes, Bear, said Mouse. I know the way now. I'll be back before tea. <gasps> so Mouse set off on his own, on his way to the moon. Look, there he goes. He looked at his moon map. He tunnelled, he climbed and he clambered up into the woods. Now, things moved in the woods. Things fluttered and scraped and rustled and sighed there. <gasps> Moon map, show me the way, whispered Mouse, but all he saw was the dark. And then came a crunch and a snap and a whisper. Eyes flashed in the shadows and bent towards Mouse. <gasps> I can go on my own, breathed Mouse. On my And out came <gasps> Bear. Hello, Mouse, he said. Need a hand? <sighs> Mouse stumbled. Oh, no, 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 Bear. No, I don't need your help. It's just it's so very dark. I, I can't see my moon map. Oh, no, Mouse, said Bear, but I've got you and you've got me. So we'll be all right. So off they go. Through the woods together. Mouse felt his way and Bear followed Mouse and they crept through the blackness and out of the woods and there was the fat moon trailing milk in the water. A long glitter of water all swept out before them. Mouse stopped. Oh, Bear! Look at my moon map. We've got to go over, but it's too far to swim. I know, Mouse, said Bear, but I've got you and you've got me, so we'll be all right. So, what did Bear do? Bear looked at the moon map. He looked very closely and then he folded it up. What's he doing, that Bear? Bear bent it in triangles and pressed down the edges. He tweaked and he tucked and he lifted and 
opened. He stroked and he smoothed and he flattened until Mouse's moon map was a little fat square, just like that. What's he doing, Bear? He's made his map into a, a little square. And so Mouse says, oh, Bear, what have you done? Now we really are lost. So what does Bear say? He says, pull, Mouse, said Bear, pull. So Mouse pulled and Bear pulled and the square of map opened and grumbled and grew just like this. Look, it opened and grumbled and grew and there was, look, he's made a boat. Clever old bear, he made a boat out of the map. And look, let's see. Look, there it is. And you can see that David's put on all the detail of the map that Mouse had done, all now made into a beautiful paper boat. <gasps> clever old bear and clever old Mouse too. It was a boat, just right for two. Come on, quick jump in, said Bear, for all of a sudden, <gasps> a storm and a wind were above and around them, shaking and spinning and swirling the boat. Mouse shivered. Oh, Bear, we can't do it. The waves are too high and the boat is too small. I oh, know, Mouse, said Bear, but I've got you and you've got me, so we'll be all right. So they leap into the boat and all through the night they held tight to each other through the wild and the wet and the whirl of the storm and I love this picture that David's done of all the sea and the waves and the foam and the green and the white and the blue so they hold tight to each other all the night through and at last oh, the wind dropped it left them but so did the moon. Oh, Bear, it's going, said Mouse. The light's disappearing. My moon map was all wrong. No, look, Mouse, said Bear. Your most marvellous map took us here. Where did it take them? It took them to the sun. The sun stroked the air with fingers of warmth and the sky glowed in pink purple, orange and gold. It tickled their ears and it brushed warmth on their necks. It stretched out their arms and put breath in their tummies. And Mouse says, we missed the moon. But Bear says, but we found something better. So off they go into the sunrise. Bear, shall we go home now? said Mouse. Oh, yes, Mouse, said Bear, but do you know the way back? We don't have your moon map. And Mouse says, I, I don't know, Bear, said Mouse, but I've got you and you've got me. So we'll be all right. And that is the end of the story. Off they go, these friends together, the end. Because all they needed in the end, all you really need in times of trouble, is you and me. And at the end of the book, oh, look, you've got a special thing. You've got how to make your very own paper boat. All the instructions that you need to make your own paper boat. Start at the beginning by colouring it all in with wax crayon because that makes the paper waterproof. Really clever tip there. And it's all been done by Bear, of course. Clever old Bear. So that is the story of the most marvellous moon map. I really hope you enjoyed it. And look out soon for more stories on Puffin Storytime. Okay, bye bye. Hello everyone, 
My name's David Litchfield and welcome to my very posh and beautiful art studio, which is, in, as we are in lockdown, is in fact my bedroom. Um, today I am going to show you uh, how I draw um, one of my favourite characters from one of my favourite books that I've ever drawn, The Marvellous Moon Map by Teresa Heapy. Um, but I'm going to draw Bear from The Marvellous Moon Map. Um, I haven't drawn him for a while. So who knows what it's going to look like, but I'm going to give it a go. Okay, I'm going to make a start. Right. Okay, so let's give this a go. So, Bear. Now, to start Bear, I'm going to draw this shape. There you go. It looks kind of like a teardrop. Um... But yeah, look, look, if we add that and then a couple of nostrils and then a nice smile, you can see that it becomes Bear's nose. So let's give him a couple of eyes. Looking a little bit shifty, looking over to the, to the side. There we go. Now Bear's got these great thick eyebrows, so I'm just going to... Draw those in like that, maybe give him a few tufts of hair. And he's always got quite a reassuring look on his face, giving a lot of comfort to Mouse when Mouse is off on one of his crazy adventures. Okay, so next I'm going to just give a very kind of rough, fuzzy outline. There we go, maybe a little bit of a fringe. Bit more fur, I think. Give it a bit more, bit more detail. Maybe a couple of bits around the eyes. Now I'm leaving the top of his head clear for the moment because that's where his hat's going to go. So then I'm going to give him again some very kind of fluffy looking ears. Bit more detail there, and then yeah. Oh, the top of his head, I'm going to draw just a line, linking it all up. And then the top of his hat. So there's the, the flap. And then the back of his hat goes around there. And now he's wearing one of those cool kind of deer stalker hats. So they have kind of flappy long ear bits. There we go. That droop down. Maybe give it a button there. Okay, let's give it a bit more shading. Okay, so now uh, I'm going to bring, I'm going to draw Bear's paws because he's kind of got them up towards his face because he's kind of contemplating something. Maybe Mouse has just asked him to go on another adventure and he's kind of a mixture of uh, apprehensive, a little bit nervous, but also quite excited because who knows what this adventure is going to, whether it's going to take them. So let's give him his little claws. There we go. Now, obviously, this is very sketchy drawing, um, but we'll see how it turns out. A bit more fuzz around his hands. There we go. Um, okay, so let's draw the top of Bear's body. So he's wearing like a really cool button-up shirt. There we go. And also, he's got his dungarees, which I think are super stylish. There we go, let's give them a bit of shading so they differentiate them from the shirt. Okay, that's looking pretty good. And then he's wearing a checkered shirt, right? So let's draw some stripes initially. Oh, rest of his arm. On the collars, there we go. So at the minute it's a striped shirt, to make it checkered, we simply just go put some more stripes on the other side. So he has the checkered shirt. Now I'm not going to colour in every single one of these, but just to give us an idea. There we go. Of just how cool and stylish this shirt is. Every other square 
There we go, give it a nice tartan feel. Looking cool, Mr. Bear. And his collar as well. Okay, so there we go. We've got the basic sketch of Bear. Now let's just give it a little more detail. Let's give his eyes a bit more detail. There we go. Maybe give him another circle and then colour this in black. There we go. Uh, okay, and now he is a bear, so I think he needs a little bit more fur, or, or at least the idea and indication of some fur. So I'm going to just very gently with the pencil just go around his features and just add just very quick little lines to indicate that he has fur. Actually, where his hands are, it looks quite cool. It looks like he's doing up his doing up his shirt. Maybe that's what he's doing. Maybe that's how he's getting ready for his adventure. Because he's putting on his adventures, adventures shirt. <laughs> okay, uh, maybe a bit around the eyes, a bit more fur. There we go. There we go, he's looking great. Okay, now, very important when you're drawing is to think about shading, because shading really can bring a drawing to life. So we're gonna start under his chin, let's go. Just think about where the shadow would be falling. If the light is coming from this side, the shadow will obviously be falling uh, more over to the left. So let's go all the way around, just giving it a little bit more definition on each of the sections. There we go, maybe he's got a few creases there where the shadow's falling nicely. You know, keeping it fairly subtle. Maybe it defines some of the hair a little bit more and maybe around the eyes. Well, actually one thing I've forgotten as well is Bear has got quite prominent and quite beautiful eyelashes that give him a really nice sense of kind of innocence and friendliness. <laughs> There you go, a bit more shading, a bit more fur. Now around the hat, it would be quite prominent. So let's go quite dark there. There we go. And actually on the peak of the hat, it would actually kind of create a whole shadowy shape. It would blend quite nicely in to his fur. Maybe a bit on the ears as well. There we go. Anyway, as I said, this is very sketchy, um, but yeah, it's, uh, it's starting to take shape. A bit of shadow on the ears of the hat as well. I love these kind of hats. I used to have one of these hats, but unfortunately I lost it, um, but I really want to get another one. My son's got one and he looks super cool in it, but um, in fact, a couple of my characters that I've drawn in a number of books wear these hat. I think I am a big fan of a Deerstalker hat. Okay, so there is Bear, just about. Let's give him a bit more definition around, around the edge. There we go. He's looking a little bit wonky, but you know, maybe he's had one too many adventures with Mouse. But I quite like him. Okay, um, now just to give him a bit of a um, bit of context, let's put him. Let's have the hint of a forest behind him. Just a hint. Maybe a few leaves. Some fairly scary-looking tree branches, kind of coming up around him. But then also some nice, pretty plants. Pretty-ish plants. Of course Bear and Mouse live in the forest and their first adventure was in the forest. They do also go into the city in one of their books um, but they always come back to the to nature and what they know which is rather lovely. 
Anyway, I think we're nearly coming to an end on this sketch. Maybe what one last thing I can do is I can take a slightly, this is all a big experiment this, but let's try it, why not? Slightly softer pencil and just add a few more indications of trees surrounding him and more foliage, etc. Okay, in fact, ah, I'm going to go back to my Star Wars pencil. And sometimes when you're drawing things, um, actually taking stuff away can be quite effective. So, for example, I'm going to get this pencil, the rubber on the end, and I'm just going to pull it down in the shape of a tree. So, again, it gives a bit more of a highlighted look of a tree. Let's see, there we go. And even I could do that on bear. Let's smudge some of this pencil so that he's got his shadow on his left side. And then even just take a few chunks of that out just to kind of, again, give a highlighted or give an indication of some fur. There we go, in fact, I'm gonna just smudge a bit of the pencil on his nose, there we go. And then really pull some of it out with the rubber so that we can really see where the shadow ends and the light is kind of hitting his face. There we go, I think we're just about finished. With my drawings, I could, I could go for hours and hours just kind of adding little sketchy bits or, you know, adding or, taking things away. And sometimes you've just got to say, the drawing's done. Very famous quote is that no artwork is ever completed. It's just abandoned and I totally know what that means because I always feel like my drawings are not, are never done. But of course it's up to the audience to decide that, I guess. But yeah, there we go. I think Bear He's looking pretty much completed there. Last thing to do, obviously, is to give it a signature. Now, where would be the best place to do that? Probably here. You should always sign your artwork because in hundreds and hundreds of years, someone might find it and want to know who this amazing artist was. Um, so yeah, always sign your artwork. But there we go. There is my drawing of Bear. Okay, thank you very much for watching me draw my bear drawing. Here it is again, so you can get a closer look. I would love to see if you can come up with your own drawings of bear or any of the other characters from the Marvelous Moon, Moon Map. And uh, I will see you all very soon. Take care. Bye-bye.